Hi, my name is Robin Dill, and it is such a joy to be here today to help celebrate the 15th anniversary of Grace Arbor. Back in 2005, my life had taken a change. My husband had just come through cancer, and my mom had passed away from brain cancer and dementia. And I was seeking the Lord as to what he wanted me to do. And I happened to see an ad in the Atlanta Journal, Constitution, for First United Methodist Church wanting to start a day program for adults. And I cut out that ad, and I put it on my refrigerator, and I would walk back and forth and look at it. And one day, I talked to my family, and I said, what do you think? And they all encouraged me to apply for the position of what would be the director of this adult day program. And it was meeting with Cindy Nash and Carol Tucker and Sherry Smith. And we worked on a grant even before I started officially. And it was Open the Doors, August 23rd, 2005. We had five participants, and we had 15 volunteers at that time. And y'all, it was incredible. That very first day, Carol Tucker's dad, Mac McMillan, was there. Nancy Ford's mom, Lois Simmons, was there. And there were three people that weren't part of the church that were made up the original five. Within a month, oh, and we were open two days a week. Within a month, we added our third day a week, and then in about a year and a half, in 2007, we added our fourth day. In 2007, one of the best gifts to me and to Grace Arbor happened was when we hired Cindy Leak as the assistant director. And Cindy and I worked together for 11 years until I stepped down in 2018. We had the best time ministering to adults with dementia, their caregivers, and the volunteers. I always told people that Grace Arbor was a three-fold ministry. It was to the participant with dementia, it was to their caregivers, but it was also to the fabulous volunteers that we had. Over the years, what blessed me was as we began to grow, other places began to hear about us. Kind of going backwards, uh, Governor Purdue had a grant that he had offered to churches to start respite ministries. And Grace Arbor was actually the first church to take him up on that grant and to open their doors. The interesting thing was the Alzheimer's Association did our first year's training and then they kind of followed us that first year. They had given us a publication for the first year. It was an Alzheimer's quarterly. And from that, I got the idea to do some intergenerational artwork. So we pulled in, in 2007, Martha Billings kindergarten class and from Kids Crossing, and we uh, did art together on Mondays. Cindy had come on board, and it was just an incredible time. We had fabulous musicians over the years, and it was a time where our folks could, in the morning, sing hymns, but in the afternoon, get up and dance, and it was the best way to end the day. We would have different events over the years. We would have big band concerts that Kevin would get together bands and we would have a big celebration and dance. We did renewal of vow services where we honored couples each year and renewed their vows. We did celebrations of anniversaries and uh, 
honored volunteers and different people that had sewn into this program. You've already heard uh, from Brad Smith, but the Bluebird Box Ministry was one that taught me how much our folks with dementia wanted to engage in purposeful activities and that they could build those Bluebird Boxes and know Number one, it went to a great cause because at the time we were supporting the clinic across the street, but also for people to have them up in their yards and to see bluebirds come and nest and see the fledging process, it was just incredible. So the Bluebird Box Ministry has always had a special place in my heart. In 2011, something significant happened. We had had a man by the name of Bob Trainer come through the program. Bob was called Boston Bob. He talked with a, a Boston accent and he was such a dear man. And at the time, I was growing roses at home and I would bring in bouquets every week and put them on the table. And when Bob passed away in January, his daughter gave me a check and said, do something with this. And so I went to the trustees and got the approval of planning the Memorial Rose Garden. And one day, Cindy and I borrowed Gwen Hertz rototiller and we rototilled that whole little area in the parking lot and I had gone over to Still Lake Nursery and picked out roses, trying to think of the participants that had been there, maybe we had lost, to come up with roses that reminded us of them. And that little rose garden, we had a, a dedication ceremony, which was just beautiful and invited everybody that had been part of the ministry. And over the years, this place has had fresh cut roses on the table from probably May to December. And that's been such a blessing. I just want to say happy anniversary, Grace Arbor. I pray for 15 more amazing years of helping families and their loved ones and giving purposeful ministry opportunities to adults and to folks in need. God's blessing. I have one more thing, one more scripture I want to share. This is what sums it all up. It's Ephesians 3.20. Now, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church, in this church, and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen.